Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today's video is a comparison of two quarterly notebook planners. One is from Inkwell Press and one is from She Plans. They are both sewn books, okay? And um, She Plans calls hers the notebook planner and I think Inkwell Press just calls hers um, the quarterlies. So let's get into this. First of all, Inkwell Press, they are A5 size, so they also fit in all those little traveler notebooks really well. So they are smaller than the sheet plans. I'm gonna take quarter one from both of these sets. I'll show you the designs on all the sets. So sheet plans is a seven by nine. So you can see the difference there between A5 size and seven by nine size. So of course you are gonna have that much less room on each of your page space. These also have completely different layouts inside, but they are the only two companies that I know of that make a quarterly planner in a sewn notebook like this. So if there are other companies that make a quarterly planner in a sewn notebook like this, please let me know. Um, I would love to know about them. I'm not aware of any others. So let me show you the covers on each of them first so you can know what you're getting. Um, so quarter one from Inkwell, quarter two from Inkwell. She does have the gold foiling on the front there, which is really pretty, and gold foiling on the back with their company name and logo there. Okay, so that's quarter two, that was quarter one. Quarter three is the corals and the grays. And quarter four is your greens and grays. Now, I have complete videos on both of these separate planners going through every single detail of these, and I will link those videos below. So after this video, if you're just interested in one or the other, or you want more details on both, go and watch those detailed reviews, which are separate videos. This video is not going to get into every detail of each one of these planners. It's going to do a comparison between the two. All right. So let's do our quarter one book. Actually, I've written some in the quarter one, so let's go to quarter two. Before we do that, I will show you that these Ollie clips, which I got mine at Container Store, but I know there's many places you can buy them. Um, they work really well on these type of notebooks for marking your place. So if you just wanna be able to turn to what week you're on, these are so strong, way stronger than like other magnet page markers. They can go through many, many pages. Like this is halfway through the Inkwell book. So this is the exact halfway point and the clip is still holding on. And so then of course, once you get past the halfway point, you could clip it at the back um, because that's probably about all you're gonna get on there. But so these clips, if you have these books are a really great thing to have, in my opinion. And they work amazingly well for holding your place. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna get into quarter two in each book. I will go ahead and show you the She Plans covers though. Quarter one, so She Plans is um, something that's, you know, uh, she has stayed neutral, is what I'm trying to say. She has stayed really neutral, clean, and fresh looking with no color at all in her books or on the outside. So quarter one, that's not gold foiling, but it's still pretty, it's, it's made to look gold. And then her logo is on the back, She Plans. I really like how both these books are finished so well um, on the back and look just as nice on the back as they do on the front. Quarter three is really pretty. And then quarter four is just really plain and fresh. Okay, so let's look at our quarter two books and compare them for comparison's sake. All right, so besides the size, the first thing I wanna mention is the paper quality. Um, Inkwell Press is one a 20 GSM in their sewn books. That is less than their bound planners. Their bound planners are 140 GSM. They cannot sew the 140 GSM paper into this book. So this is 120 GSM, which is still amazing paper. Um, she Plans is 70 pound paper. 
okay, which equates to a little bit less than 120 GSM. I will try to look that up and put that in here because uh, 80 pound paper equates to 120 GSM and this is 70 pound paper, so it's a little bit less. But her paper is still really good quality, and I have pen tests and everything in my video of this planner on its own, and I can try to pull out that quarter one book and show you the pen test. Okay, so let's start right off. Both of their covers um, seem very durable. They seem kind of like a, not a placemat, um, but something slick to protect it from wet. And she plans is a smooth, completely smooth. Inkwell Press is has a texture to it on the front there. Really pretty. I'm not sure actually which cover um, would hold up better because the only one I have used like on a constant is Inkwell Press and their covers have held up amazing for me. I will also link below Planarisma, who is a planner friend of mine online. She has done a complete review of She Plans on her blog of this quarterly, and she has a lot of details on there too. So you might want to check that out. She has actually used hers a lot, and she did say your cover does get a bit bent and, you know, does show some wear, but it's still holding up. Okay, you have your title page. And here you have your title page, but they are giving you a place to put your name in here. There's no nameplate in the sheet plans, but there's a big area right here. So I think that's just fine to put your name in. Okay. She plans is just white inside your cover and Inkwell Press is always in every book, this gray hexagon inside your cover. All right, she plans the next page you open to is six months at a glance. Now, what the six months at a glance means is wherever you are in the quarter, you have that quarter plus the next three months, which I think is a really good idea because it helps you with your advanced planning. The biggest problem I find with quarterly books, if you don't carry them all together with you, if you're someone who carries around your planner, then planning for the next quarter to me is hard you don't have your calendar there with you. But with this setup, you do actually have room to look at your calendar and record appointments or dates, things that you have coming up in the next quarter. I really like that idea. Now, Inkwell Press has, they have your entire year at a glance at the back of each one of these quarterly books and your next year of 2019. And they have several graph grid note pages at the back of every quarterly planner. So you could definitely jot down appointments here and here's your calendar to look at. And so you can write down appointments here to go put them in, in your other book. But, um, so those are your options with the two books that for planning ahead. Then you have doodle, take notes and jot things down. Some notes pages in the beginning of she plans. And next in Inkwell press, you go straight into your monthly calendar for the quarter. So first you have some note pages here. You have four, six, eight, eight note pages in the front, whereas Inkwell Press puts theirs at the back. Okay, so you probably have around the same number. Let's see, two, four, six, eight. Yes, and nine on the back. So right around the same number, it's just Inkwell Press's our graph grid note paper and they have that little label on the top left hand side of each page and she plans are lined and so that's the difference in the note pages and she plans has her big chunk of note pages at the front and Inkwell Press has their big chunk at the back okay so Inkwell Press and she plans you go straight into your monthly calendar now you can see right off with the size of the page that you are losing some space in your boxes with your Inkwell Press. She Plans has no colors in her book at all. Inkwell Press rotates through four color schemes, which is the same four color schemes that are in their bigger bound planners. So for the year, she chooses four color schemes and your year just rotates through that. So April, this is one of the color schemes. I'll go ahead and show you all four in case you're not familiar with Inkwell Press. 
And then that's what your weeks look like with the April color scheme. They go in kind of an ombre fashion. So they start with darker at the top with the color that she's chosen for that month. And it goes down in ombre fashion. Then your whole month of April is the same color. And then May, this is another color scheme. And there's what your May mission board, plan and focus, and habit tracker page looks like. So I have full reviews of what this page is in the Inkwell Press Planner and how it rotates back to your goal pages, which are in quarter one. I forgot to mention that. Um, in quarter one of Inkwell Press, you do have the exact same goal pages that come in her bigger planner. So you have room for a 2018 mission. You have personal, social, financial, health, home, and dream big goals. And then you have check-ins at 3, 6, 9, and 12 months. Those goals are supposed to be carried over, if you want to use it this way, to her mission board for every month. And then your plan and focus and daily habit tracker could also be incorporated with your goals or not. But the little words that are written on these hexagons for each month go with your goal pages. I have planned an Inkwell Press before where I don't use her words and I don't follow that and you can use the hexagons for whatever you want and that has totally worked for me too but that's just something good to note for there and if you want more detail on these pages then that video will be linked below all about that in detail and so that is something to note in here let me show you that for quarter one in your she plans, it does not have any goal pages to start your year out for you, okay? It goes right into January, of which in my video I planned some so that you guys could see that. So it goes right into January and then you have your monthly goal pages. So, but she does not have the big yearly goal pages. So we'll go through this, but she doesn't have that big yearly goal set like the Inkwell Press does. So I wanted to make sure to mention that because that's a big difference. She Plans does have monthly goal pages, but does not have that big yearly. So I do love the habit trackers and I do love the plan and focus and the mission board page in this Inkwell Press. If you follow me, you already know I'm a big fan of these pages. It's one of my favorite things about Inkwell. Okay, but something to note is if you need more room in your calendars, or if you are not a huge fan of these colors and having them rule each month, then She Plans does not have any colors. And we'll get into the weekly layout of that. I wanted to show you the other color schemes. So the next, the third color scheme is this one. It's a little bit, it's her only really dark jewel tone one, in my opinion. And it's probably my favorite because of that. So this is her third color scheme. And you have the same ombre effect with each color for the month. And then we need to go into the next quarter to go to the fourth color scheme. So your fourth color scheme is going to be that coral right there. And that's what that month is going to look like. So I did want to give you a snippet of those little color schemes in there. Okay, so those were the four color schemes in Inkwell, so you know what you're getting. In She Plans, you're getting bigger boxes. Um, both of these notate the holiday on the monthly view. So you can see Inkwell Press notates it at the bottom. It's just a little bit lighter, and She Plans notates it at the bottom also. It's just darker. So I'm going to kind of give you a close-up of that so you can get kind of a feeling for how these different boxes look. Okay, and as you'll notice, she plans, just has her month written, you know, smaller up here to the side, and um, Inkwell Press has, you know, a big header. So both of them have a list option on the right side here. This Inkwell Press has top five and notes, and then has a view of your next month right there. And she plans also has a view of your next month right there. So very similar. Now, after each month in She Plans, so Inkwell Press, your, your goal page is before each month, before the weeks flow. So you have your monthly, and then you have your mission board, plan and focus, and habit trackers. And those are your goal pages in Inkwell Press, and then your weeks start to flow for that month. 
She plans, has her monthly view, and then she goes into her monthly goals and list. And then she goes into her weekly flow. So you have monthly goals. So you don't have as much structure to this one on how you want to do your goals. So if you're more of a free flowing person and you don't want to be guided, then this might be more for you. If you like to come up with your own color scheme for every month and you don't want to be dictated by the color scheme that is given to you in Inkwell, and you want to be able to do your own colored pens, stickers, that type of thing, washi tape, then this one might be more for you. If you need more space, then she plans is bigger. If you need it to be smaller and more compact, if you want it to be a five size to fit in traveler's notebooks, I've known people who have put all four quarters together in a traveler's notebook because they're still really light and portable. They're lighter than her bigger bound books, her seven by nine bound planners. So even all together, they're lighter than a big bound book if you wanted to do that. So there's just, there's things to think about if you're comparing these two. I think I forgot to mention, She Plans is sold out of her quarterlies because she is a small company. She's not doing a reprint until her 2019 release, which I believe she said happens, her pre-sales happen in September. Now she does have many other planners and she has many printable options available right now. So check out her shop, but th these quarterly books are sold out for the 2018 year. But she has said she is definitely remaking them for the 2019 year. She loves to show cover choices on Instagram and have polls and let her um, subscribers make choices and vote on covers. So definitely follow her if you are interested in she plans. Okay, she loves to ask her customers input. All right, then you have the monthly list. So you just have a list. Then you, it goes all the way over here, and then you have a little section, Memories Made. I like that she's actually reminding you to jot down, take some notes of what important memories happened that month, things you want to remember, because I actually try to do this every month in one of my Leuchtturm journals, actually in my um, life book or my everything book. I have a video on that called my life book in my Leuchtturm, and I try to do this every month. But to have it right here in my planner would really help reinforce that I'm doing it. Okay, let's go into what these two weekly spreads look like. She Plans has its very clean slate. I, I really love the setup of this. You have a number one, number two, and number three called the priorities for the week. Then you have the weekly list. You can use that however you want. Then you have a big note section. Then you have your week laid out very simply right here. And she is giving you all the page real estate. I love that. She's not using a huge amount of space for her header right there. She is just writing the header of the week small so that you can have more real estate on your week and your page. Now, I have done some planning to show in the other video to kind of show you how I might use this week, I did a pen test first of all, and all the pens held up amazingly well on her paper. I mean, the paper held up amazingly well to all the pens. So it's great paper at 70 pounds. So how I would probably use it is I record my workout right here. I record my temps right there. And then I put any appointments or go-to errands that I must do that week right here. And who knows, I might even draw a line right there. You could definitely divide this into three sections if that helped you for however you're using it. And then my weekly list would go over here. Here's one with a weekly list and where I used some mild liner highlighters. And then my weekly list would go over here and then I would just look every day what can I get done from my weekly list. And the thing that would stand out to me on the day is my appointments. So if you don't have a lot of appointments, if you don't need your entire day planned out on the day that it's happening, so if you just kind of like to have a weekly list to go from, and then you fit in all those items on the days when they can fit in, and then you just have your appointments at a glance really easily standing out on the days, then this might be a really good layout for you. Now, 
if you want more room per day and you don't want a huge space for weekly lists and weekly priorities, then the inkwell might be better for you. So Inkwell Press, she also uses every inch of page real estate. I love that. No wasted room on headers. She has you starting on a Monday, and so does she plans. Monday start, but both their monthly calendars are Sunday start, like typical. And then she has the date really small under the day, and then you have three boxes for every day. These three boxes can be used in so many ways. I love these Inkwell three boxes. When I planned an inkwell press, I used those three boxes for my go-tos or appointments for the day. So the same thing that would go here for me went in those boxes. So if my son had an orchestra sectional that day, if we had the heat check man coming to check our heat unit, that went there. You know, if I had to go pick up a Kroger click list grocery order, that went there. I rarely had more than three appointments uh, per day. But if I did, I would just put them over here and highlight them. So that's what I used them for. But they can be used for so many uses. I've seen people use them for their weather, for their workout, for their dinner. I've seen people use them for, you know, a gratitude, for their water tracking. So there's just a myriad of uses you can use that for. Now, when I planned in it, I did one of two things. Then I would just write my to-dos in here for the day. And then... She has these magic little dots, so you can divide the page easily. So there's one little dot right there, if you can see it, and then there's one right here, and they're on both sides of the page, and I call them the magic dots. And that way, if you want to divide your day right there with a line, it's easy because you just line up a ruler on the dots, and then you can decide if you're going to, you know, make a work section, a home section, and then these are like your trackers, like I mentioned. So you can definitely divide up work and home, or you could divide up to-do list appointments, and then you might be using this for other tracking things, whereas I use them for appointments. So that's why her horizontal system is called the Flex. This horizontal layout in Inkwell Press is called the Flex, and that is because it is so flexible to change up and use it however you want to. Then she has her weekly focus down at the bottom, which is five little hexagons, and then your note section right there. So you don't have as much room for weekly lists and notes. You do have your notes pages at the back if you need those. So also I should mention um, for several months, I actually used this Inkwell Press as a journal. Because of its horizontal nature, it really lended itself well to be a journal. I could just recap the day real quickly, and then I would write any highlights or gratitudes in here. And I really loved journaling in this too, so it makes a great journal. This also makes a great fitness food tracker. I actually use her Bigger Bound version of the same layout for that. And so you can write your food in and your calories here, adding them up through the day. I put my workout here. I put... Um, a symbol for how I did with my eating that day, like a check or an X, and I put a DC if I had a Diet Coke because I'm trying to get off of that, having one every day. And then this one would be a calorie total once you were done if you totaled it up so you could easily see. I've also pe seen people use that box for tracking the amount of sleep, the amount of steps. Um, so there's just, there's so many things you can do, but this planner also makes a great food fitness tracker. So, all right, and with it being so small, it's a great companion to any big planner if it is your food fitness tracker. In the Inkwell Press, I didn't expect to show this to you, but it's right here. In the Inkwell Press Big, this is what my Inkwell Press looked like last year when I planned in it. So you can see how I drew the line down, and you can see how my weeks got filled up. And I have videos all about this. I have an Inkwell Press playlist if you want to go and check that out, if you want to see how I utilize my Inkwell Press while I was planning in it. I have videos on that under my Inkwell Press playlist. But what I was gonna show you is, at the back of Inkwell Press, if you have the spiral bound, her sewn journals and her quarterly books fit perfectly in the accordion pocket at the back. 
So if you were using, and your planner still lays flat and you can still write in it, it functions perfectly. So if you are using her planner for your, you know, normal daily planning, and then you want to have a food and fitness tracking, but you want to keep it with you if you're someone who brings your planner to work with you every day and has your planner on you at all times, your food and fitness tracking can go right in here. So I just think that's kind of really a great idea. All right. So let's get back into this. So that is the basic layout for each one of these. You go through your weeks and she plans. And then you have a doodle, take notes, and jot things down at the end of the month. You just have a two-page spread. So most of your notes are at the beginning of the book, as I showed you. Then you have a two-page spread right before your monthly layout. And then you have your monthly layout. And then you have your goals for the month. So you have a two-page spread of your monthly page, February goals, the monthly list, memories made February. And then you go into your weeks for February. So that is the flow of the She Plans. Let's go over the flow of the Inkwell Press one more time. So the flow of the Inkwell Press is you start with your month, then you go into your mission board, plan and focus, daily habit tracker, then you go into your week pages for the month. Then at the end, there are no note pages in between for Inkwell. So there are, there are two note pages in between every month and she plans. There are no no pages in between. You only have the ones at the end. It goes straight into your next month, your next month mission board, plan and focus, habit tracker page, and then into the weeks. So those are the main differences from these two quarterly books. I love them both for different reasons, honestly, and I can see different planners needing them for different reasons. So they definitely both feel fill a different niche because they are not similar enough to fill the same um, need. I feel like they they both fill a different category of people who need different things. They're different sizes. They have very different layouts, and they have very different offerings in them. But I love the versatility of both of these books. There is just something about a notebook that is this slim and trim and hold so much planning inside of it and that you can carry it with you. I think for a student in high school or college, you cannot get a lighter weight, better compact planning system. This would take up no room in a backpack and offer no weight is the thing. It's, it's not going to be heavy, either one. So, all right, guys. That's all I have for this comparison. I will link those videos I told you about below if you're interested in either one of these separately. And, and I will see you next time. Until then, happy planning. Bye-bye.